So I took everything out of the Vicky and floor is not bad. Not bad at all. Um, this is probably, because when he told me it wasn't that bad, you know, this, I guess this is what he was talking about because inside here, minus the stupid bird cage, um, the metal looks fine pretty much on the underneath, like below the belt line. Looks good. Um, obviously, that's an old repair. Probably needs to be addressed. This one needs to be addressed. But just working on this for now, um, at least I thought I was. I was going to start shaping a piece for this corner. And then my buddy Jeff called me and said he had the day off and could pick up the 36 with me. So we're going to do that instead because that takes priority over this Vicky. Um, but, you know, I think later on today I'll still work on this because I got to look at the 36, assess it, tell the customer, see if we need to buy patches. It's, I don't think I'm going to be working on that today. Um, but it's going to be in the shop today and it's going to be awesome. So I cleaned up a little bit. As you can see, my tools are kind of shoved over there. Obviously, that doesn't move. Um, and I think after I move the hood, I should be able to move this like here because it's on a four wheel dolly. And then I can put the 36 where this just was and the 46 obviously right here because it drives. Take it out. Um, it's going to be packed in here again, but I do have the option of leaving this outside he gave me a tarp and some clamps he said leave it outside i don't care um, i'm just going to keep it inside as much as i can because that's just what i like to do i don't really like to leave things outside unless it's personal and hasn't been touched yet so right now before anyone comes here i'm gonna just kind of look and assess i might even cut out the back half of this bird cage i think i'm gonna cut it there and down there and there or there there and maybe come up and cut it there because i might have to do some work up in there so i'll cut there there and there on both sides obviously got to cut the bottoms got to cut where it's welded to the rear window hopefully take this out in one piece i now that i'm saying it I don't think I'll be able to. I might have to cut those down the center. Those three bars right there. But if he wants to put those back in, I will weld those back in. But really should be uh, really should be out while I fix this because there's no there's no good access to the back of those panels with those two bars or all this cage hanging out here. This side I'm gonna have to take off more because it's uh. Yeah, this bar is in the way it comes to here, so I might cut it like, I don't know, here somewhere in the bird cage, and then take all behind here out because it needs some serious help. Yeah, they did it to both sides. I don't know why they moved things. Maybe they put B pillars from a different car in. That's why it's uh, they welded it like that. I'm really not sure. It's kind of very odd to me why the things that were done to this were done to this. Um, but the rest of it looks all right. Like this side is not bad. It's just this weird thing that's going on here. A weld through here, which is decent. It's all right. I could always hammer that up because everything was TIG welded which is nice um, word on the street is Dick Royer the guy who built well started building that 46 and owned the 37 and started building that 37 Cabrio that I worked on his brother apparently worked on this uh, you know 
the other cars were clean minus the 37 because that like wasn't touched by Dick Royer but he owned it um, all the other ones are fine I'm surprised his brother didn't have like close to the craftsmanship that he had um, I don't know it's just kind of confusing at least he TIG welded stuff I gotta give him that as long as it's not MIG welded man I can try and beat some of these welds into shape but if it was a MIG weld I'd have a real hard time doing that so I think this is, I'm going to strip this Bondo off. Um, nothing on here, thank God. Nothing anywhere. It's just that literally that corner has Bondo. So I'm going to take that off, inspect that first, I guess. See what we're working with. I can kind of tell from the backside what was done. So there's just kind of a, a cut through the center. That's, that's pretty much it. And I might, you know... Might be able to hit it with the planishing hammer and kind of smooth that side right out. Depends if he overlapped or not. This kind of looks a little funky. So I might... I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out, but... This is promising. Behind here is promising. This, not so much. Yeah, um... <sighs> Like, that's supposed to be a body line, man. I wonder if they sell that patch. Make it easy, you know? I'll have to do some searching. Soul searching, actually. What I got here is that paper template that you saw me just make. Yes, it is very crimply and crunchy. It'll be fine for what I need it for. So, what's going on here is uh, most of it laid flat, so it's gonna be a lot of form into this shape here um, rather than shape. So the shape I do need to put in is where this corner really folded right over. So, this here. To get this shape up in here, I'm going to shrink pretty much in this V here, all the way down here, because this needed uh, this needed some shrinkage too. So I'm gonna come in through here, to here, and just kind of take that corner down uh, as much as I can and see what I can do. And then I'll form the rest of it kind of over my knee a little bit. I'll move this one, manipulate this, make sure uh, everything's nice and happy. And we'll try to get it fitting on the, uh, the body. And I know I said I was going to go pick up the 36. I still am. I'm just, this is in the meantime before my buddy gets here. So I figured I'd do something. So let's transfer this to a piece of steel. And this here is torn, so I think I'm just going to go straight up and over. Just kind of fill this corner in. Um, and that's a start. I'm going to make this, this area here was where that Victoria um, bead detail comes in. And uh, I think I'm just going to make that a separate panel um, and just stitch it in to where it goes. Because there's a lot of... Um, a lot of stuff going on around here and I just I feel comfortable just making that bead detail separate um, with a little overhang on each side welding it calling it a day I'll take I'll take a pattern from the other side because the other side's not half bad and uh, we'll get that done after but right now mainly working on getting this shape done here so let's transfer it and get it done
back from the blasters. Got Jeff helping me out. And it's rough. It's a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. But, you know, it's fine. It's what I do. They're all pretty much previous repairs. But I got to redo them. The floor has, believe it or not, been patched about 20 times and it was bondoed so you couldn't tell. Wheel wells, inner wheel wells have a bunch of patches on them. This rear section's all hammered up. Fender is surprisingly nice, the front ones. Deck lid's not great. Um, front end stuff seems to be pretty nice. This back here, obviously you can tell it's random cuts and splices and random little patches. It's just a mess. I don't know if you can even see it because uh, everything's the same color, but it's not great. Obviously, from here up on the car is fine, but everything else is toast. Let's unload it. So we're back in here, the car's blasted, miscellaneous parts are blasted. The only thing that is not done is the doors. Um, I don't know if I explained it, that door is almost perfect. This one, not so much. I really don't remember my thinking on not bringing them to the blasters, but I did not. Uh, I can always address that later, it's not too big of an issue for now. So. What we do need to address is if you can see any of this on camera. I hope you can. Um, dented up pretty badly. Uh, rips, holes, extra holes, um, rot down at the bottom. There's the, uh, you know, great work here. Some uh, more great work on the other side. factory seam right down the middle. I don't know if you can see the uh, dents all in here. That's just factory. This here is fantastic. Uh, somebody scabbed that on, so that's cool. Um, I don't know how that happened. Uh, maybe dirt collecting in here, but the bottom of the rail is fine. It's not, it's just the panel here. This side, let's see. Um, I don't know if this is factory that there's a seam here, but there's a seam here. There's a little weird patch done here for what reason, I don't know. Um, you know, scab patch there. Some rot down at the bottom. Patch, patchy, patchy rot that has just had a piece of metal on the backside tacked to the rot. Down here, I know it's kind of dark. Uh, the bead itself has been quote unquote replaced. Um, but the metal above it seems to be all right. Um, so if anything, I'll have to do just a tiny little patch in here. We'll see. Same, still the same amount of welding, so who knows? I might just weld it higher up. Give me more access with my planishing hammer. Who knows? Haven't decided yet. Uh, this side. This has been replaced. 
again, quote unquote, replaced. Um, it looks like it was replaced with an original, which is kind of cool because there's uh, some pitting and this piece here is riveted like original. And I'm not sure that they would do that on a patch panel. So that's cool. Uh, but it has already started rotting. That's why I'm thinking this was an original piece that someone grafted in. Yeah, it's got all the correct holes and stuff. Firewall is decent. Other than this uh, battery box that was reversed. Um, so someone, this might have been a hot rod back in the day and somebody, or like a track car or something like that, and somebody tried to reverse it and bring it back to a stock car. Not too sure. Um, holes have been kind of filled up in this area here. This side, surprisingly very nice. Um, obviously patches down here, this bead has been quote unquote patched. Uh, that needs to be fixed before I can send it out the door. This side, not great. Um, then instead of using one patch, they use three. On a panel that can use just one. I know I've done multiple pieces in one section before, so I can't really knock them there. But, uh, man, it's tough. That's tough. Like, it's not even like I can cut this here and re-weld. Like, all this metal is distorted and, and it's all dense, so I need to smooth out this metal here before I can even weld to it. Um, same story here, some rot on the top. This corner has been replaced or the opposite. I don't know. There's a weld here, but there's like nothing in this area. If this looks original, I, I don't know what happened here. Oh, well, maybe, no, that's a patch. So it came, I don't know, I'm confused. But I need to redo it. And I haven't showed you the best part yet. The floor. Man, is it great. Okay, so we got this jumbled mess. And we come around here and there's a bunch of scabs holding the tunnel on. It's a nice piece of angle iron there. And a patch here. Oh, and a patch here. And a patch up here. And another one here. You know, one there. This whole section there with the three holes there is a patch. Same with that front floor section. It's just one big patch. It's a quilt. And we come here and it's the same story. We gotta cut up, over, down, across, down, up. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's just very confusing on what they were doing here. Um, the back panel that's all been patched and that's getting replaced. So, moral of the story is, when you buy a car that looks really nice, it might not be. And this is no knock to the guy who bought this car. Uh, there is not many of these out there. This is just, it is what it is. Uh, you're not going to find one. If you can find one, it's probably going to be in this condition anyway. He's not the type to roll around in a car full of Bondo. So we had this, this, so this is what we have to do. Got to do it right. He likes to do it right. I like to do it right. So this is where we're at. But there's no rot on the car. It's just a bunch of bad patches. So, but who knows, like this car could have been passed in the 60s. Could have been patched in the 50s. Uh, we really have no idea of telling when this was done. Uh, so this, 
I don't know, this, this is probably perfectly acceptable for back then. For most places. Yeah, yeah, this guy's doing great work throughout history. But I think more meticulous people, um, they've really multiplied over the years. And now everyone likes to do it right. Yeah, there is a few scab guys out there doing scab jobs, but most of the guys are doing it right these days. So I hope to step, follow their footsteps and uh, do this car right. So we gotta go along and order some patches for this. Uh, pretty much everything, eight inches down along the whole car. Just order every patch for it. Um, since there's so much work in this car, I'm not going to hand make every patch. Uh, it's just going to add up way too quickly. Um, and these patches can be bought. So I'm just going to buy as much as I can. And then uh, tweak them to fit. It's cheaper for the customer to tweak a patch than it is for me to fully make a patch. And I'm okay with that. Um, so I think enough on this car here um, until we buy patches and figure stuff out. I'm going to prime um, as much stuff as I can that doesn't need work. Like the vent for the cowl. The cowl vent needs no work so that I can go and self-etch. That'll be all right. I think these front inner fenders are okay. I can prime those. I think that's about it actually. Unfortunately, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Not going to be too bad. All right, so that's going to round out the day here for me. Um, besides, well, on the 36, that's going to round out the day for the 36. Um, and I, I'm going to give the customer a call, take some pictures, send it to him. Um, then we can go over it some more, see what he needs to buy or what I need to buy and I'm gonna get going keep busy on the Vicky so I'm gonna do a little bit of this uh, roof patch here try and shape this patch get it fitting the way I think it should I'll take some radius I'll make some radius gauges from a flat piece of stock on the other side of the roof here just to make sure I got the right contours. And uh, yeah, we'll start cooking. Hopefully we can make this in a, you know, by the end of this video. That'd be cool. Get rid of that Frankenstein, man. I can't get over that. And hopefully I can cover most of this with just one piece. I plan on kind of following the factory seam, which is here, not here. It's a little over here. Cutting on the factory seam, kind of cutting down near the bead and getting mainly maybe to like here, just one piece. That would be cool. And then make this from the other side. All right, well, I got to cut out and rough shaped. I flattened out the edges with uh, English wheel with a flat die. And now, I think I'm gonna start doing some heavy shrinking on this corner here.
Okay, so I've been getting, uh, it's been feeling thick as I've been putting it, putting it through the wheels. Um, and there's, I guess, some built up gunk from, uh, I'm guessing, the lubrication that I use on the Pomax. Uh, it's drying up and causing it to stick. And there's a line on the bottom of the, the bottom wheel of caked up junk. So I'm going to clean. Clean the wheels off. It's good to have clean wheels anyway. Clean them up once in a while. You should probably clean them every time you... Every time you use it, but... We're not perfect, and most of the time we're lazy. And I'll speak for yourself, Travis. But, alright, now I got some clean wheels. And some clean material because I cleaned that off camera. Backside was awfully sticky. It's all clean now. So let's see how this feels. Okay, so. This panel, at least where I made this uh, radius gauge, is looking pretty good. Um, so I think, I'm not gonna match it perfect to this radius gauge because the other side isn't perfect. I kinda got it about where I think it needs to be and it, it looks good to me. There's some could maybe raise up back here, so maybe I'll do a quick wheel session right here. Actually, do that right now. Eh, you know what? I think it's all right. So, feels all right. Feels pretty good. So, let's now, I think, I think I want to make a couple more radius gauges on different parts of the panel. This is just kind of, one part of the panel that I was like, you know, this is pretty much a main area smack dab right in the middle. And I think it's going to help me get the overall shape quicker. So that's why I went with the spot that I did. So now I'm gonna do some other spots. So I think I'm gonna do one pretty much just around here, get this contour correct, uh, then I might see if I can't get this guy right around here because I think I think that needs a lot of help. So I'm not quite sure. Yeah, talking and working is very hard for me. I can't do it. Uh, don't, look too, don't look too half bad to me. So, let me make some other ones. And try to refine the shape of this whole panel. That was probably not the way to do it, but it's the way I'm doing it. So I know in here, there's that's definitely not the shape that it needs to be. I'm going to have to do a lot more shrinking, I think, on this edge to get that refined. But this right here is the shape 
that this panel wants to be. Um, I'll probably wash over it with a lower crown die on low pressure just to even out all the marks, but I used a higher crown die to uh, just kind of build up to the shape that we needed. And it's still, it's a good finish on it, but it's not mirror, but it's like streaks of mirror polish. So let's, uh, let's make some more gauges and try to get this panel perfect. So I got a few, uh, what am I trying to say? I made a few of those radius gauges and uh, now I'll kind of mark them off. Alright, so I marked a couple off. This is the first one we did that worked out nice. Now I'm working on this one about here. Raising some material up and uh, just kind of getting the contours correct. Putting some form into it, you know, that old chestnut. But it's, it's, uh, it's coming. Slowly taking shape. I'll show I'll bring you over to the body and show you what's going on there. That first one. First one we made here. This is this first line. Yeah. So that fits up pretty good. Then I made this guy. To kind of get kind of in the top of there, top region. The bottom on the other side's pretty all right, up to about here, so I figured I'd get this contour done. Then I got one about here, kind of on top of that bead line. Then I made another one about here. And this kind of covers most of this area, but it fits really nice here. So here, I got one there, here, and down here. So first I'm working on getting this cross section fitting nicely. And it's just, you know, patience stretching it out, shrinking whatever I need to shrink. But it's hard because I can't really test it on the body because that corner is such the wrong shape um, as that one. So I'm trying to match that corner um, see it's taking it's taking shape. It looks a lot better than uh, you know, that, that mess that's underneath it, but I think this does go down a bit, actually. I think it's further down like this, but you know, I'm going to get it as close to a mirror image as the other side as I possibly can. Then I think I'm just going to cut that whole junk out. And uh, I think I'm gonna tack the new piece I made where this one would go, obviously. But even if this whole section of the other side doesn't fit up, I'm gonna put this piece where it belongs. I'll try to measure from as many places as I can. And then I might have to bring this out or in more to match it. Cause as you can see, it's like, it's like dented in right here. So it's not, not even close to the uh, original shape. So I might have to do some funky stuff to get it fit in there because I, you know, I want it to look correct. 
I don't want to just half-ass fix it, you know? So, more shaping, a lot of shaping to do. And uh, to get this the way it is to the way it should be, you know, just a lot, a lot of work getting this panel, the contours that it needs to be, and it's very tricky to uh, replace because the whole side of the car has been messed with and you gotta kinda try to bring it back to the way it should be. It's, uh, it's real tough, it's hard to explain. So a lot of shrinking, stretching, and wheeling later, we have the makings of this patch here. Um, sit pretty good on the roof. Still need to shrink the edge just a tad. It's kind of pulling away from the body here, but that should be no problem. I'll do that on my Lancaster style shrinkers. Um, but the rest of it takes the contour of the other side for the most part. Uh, I went by my little my little gauges here that I made, but since this side is like totally different than the other side, I could kind of only get it the best as I could. It doesn't quite match it, but it matches up with the roof over here. I don't know if it's different or what, but uh, it's kind of cool. For some reason, the top, I don't know what the heck going on here this one sits on there nice this one not quite but you know it matches up with what's there and it's not like it's getting hung up on the old stuff that was repaired because it's somewhere over here I cut it out and yeah it's over here like I cut it out you saw me do that so it's not getting hung up on it like it was um, I don't know, I'm not quite sure, but, uh, I'm happy with the fit. Just need to do some edge work. Let's see how this one fits. Uh, it goes around here somewhere. Yeah, see it pulls away kind of halfway here, okay, but it needs to go in more to meet up with the body. And like this here, it's not terrible. It's not like it's dipping in at the weld too much. And it's kind of pulling away here. It's kind of odd the way uh, the sides don't match up quite as they should. But, you know, whatever. Doing my best making it fit because this was a nightmare. So that'll probably be tomorrow. Today is, this is all I'm getting done today. It's been a lot of wheeling and shrinking on the edge. Um, I'm happy with it so far, but we'll jump on it tomorrow and uh, get that tuned up. This, uh, just ordered all the patches for this and the floors and also a firewall because he's running a caddy motor. There's a firewall that pushes it two inches back or two and a half. That should work better for what we're doing here. Um, 
So yeah, not touching this until I get my patches and I think a frame. If the chassis is not done soon enough, I'll probably just pull my five window body off of that chassis and use that one for now. I don't know. I should probably just use the one that's going to sit on forever. But back at it tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day, and I was just staring at this and staring at what this piece was. And you know how I was saying, like, I don't understand what they were trying to do here? I get it. I, I remembered uh, one of my first, first, this must have been like the first fab thing I've ever done on a car. Um, it was me, my friend Mike, Dave, I think Jimmy was there. Um, my friend Mike had this 70s BMW 2002. He wanted like a track style of 2002 and he wanted rear fender flares on it, oh, maybe fronts too. And the rears, instead of shaping a piece that was a fender flare, uh, he wanted a more boxy kind of flare. And we bent strips, I think this was my idea. We bent strips of what we wanted, like the body come down and then the fender flare come out and down. We made that shape in little strips and then literally welded. It, it had to have been a hundred strips together to make that fender flare. So I've been there. I've done it. I forgot I did that. And it's kind of funny because I keep like making fun of all these repairs and like Lo and behold, I, I did it before. I was that guy. So, you know, if somebody's out there and they saw a 2002, because he doesn't have it anymore. And like, what the did that guy do? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> so, I totally forgot about that. Um, but I don't do that anymore. So I guess I'm cool to say it. I don't know. Whatever. Back to this. So I'm at a point, like I said before, I need to shrink this edge. So I'm going to take that off and do that. Um, uh, I guess I should make this piece up here too. I should extend this and make this like, oh my God, man. I even splice the piece in. It's not even close to being straight. Oh man, okay. I don't know, I'll see what I can do. I think I was gonna make this piece, but it's kind of all there, minus like, I don't know why he welded to the side of it. Cause this is an extra piece on top or underneath. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, but I need to figure out what I'm doing because I don't want to just weld this in where it is because this might need to get fixed and this might need to get fixed. The back is fine. I'll planish that out and try to get this smooth before this gets welded in. But it's kind of, I'm kind of working my way this way now. This must have been a crack. That's why this got welded up. Yeah, it had to have been some damage to the side. That, there's no other explanation for all this because this would not have been needed to be cut. Like there's no reason there should be a cut here for a chop. So something definitely happened there. I think I just got to get, take this piece back off and just start messing with this and see what's under there. Cause I got no idea what that is. Um, yeah, I'll do that. And I think I want to take this, the rest of this drip edge off that's here. Most of it's popping off anyway, and it's been torch cut off. The other side's missing, so might as well take this one off. There's a bunch of little stuff I got to do. I don't really know what I'm doing, because this is like... I don't know what was done. I just got to kind of cut stuff out and mess with stuff, but...
Alright, so you saw me cutting out uh, these pieces here. Uh, I cut the roof panel out because I just want to fix it um, off of the body. So this piece is probably getting cut off because they put a filler piece in where this, uh, this indent goes, where the uh, window channel or uh, drip edge goes. See it also all down here. And from here on, they filled it. And like, it's perfect from the backside. I wish it wasn't weld. I wish it was like lead so I could just melt it out. But it's not, it's ruined. So I'm gonna cut it at a little before this weld scene to cut all that out. Um, I'll hammer and dolly this where we cut the spot welds and I'll weld the holes that need to be welded um, and then just remake from here back. Um, I need to do it anyway because you know I need to figure out how much on the edge I need to add to this piece. Um, but. I got this one in place as good as I want to get it. Um, it flows nicely into the back panel. And as you can see, this this sitting pretty tightly on there. And it's not a, this ain't a perfectly good piece. So that's as good as I'm gonna get that. Um, flows around nicely around the corner and goes right into, I don't know if you can tell the clamps are in the way, but into the window and I clamped where the uh, glass would sit so everything's flat so the glass when they put the glass in here it'll be flat and I'm gonna make a, uh, a section for the center here because let's see where is it and eh, it's over here somewhere I cut it out because they, they spliced in a piece in the center but it wasn't the same it might have been out of a Model A or something like that. It was a little different uh, detail on there and it didn't line up. So I'm gonna make, probably make a die or something or do some uh, work on the bead roller and get a nice matching section for there. Um, then I'll work on creating, I think it's from here over that I need to recreate the, this uh, little roof section. Should come out all right. I like the way this is shaping up. Uh, like I said, I think I'm done with it. I think I'm gonna figure out where exactly it's gonna live, scribe, and uh, that'll live there. But for now, it's just gonna stay uh, tech screwed. I only got held on by two, one here and one there, just so it don't really move. I have some, you know, some give to adjust for things, but I think it's coming out pretty good. And I stand back, it's hard to kind of tell the symmetry because that one's so shiny. It seems like it just ends before it. Uh, but it looks like the same shape to me. Um, yeah. So next time, next video, uh, I will be on the Vicky still. We got the parts ordered for this. I think I said that already. So probably starting next week on the 36 Roadster, but this week is Vicky time. So I'm gonna do some more work on this. Hopefully get at least the, the top and everything here roughed in for uh, before I jump on the 36. But I don't know if I'm touching any of this. I think I'm just gonna leave that alone, honestly. I might uh, get my grinder in there and maybe grind some of that weld away on the right side of this little bead detail and just kind of crisp it up a bit. Who knows? Who knows? I'm not sure. Because I'm not going crazy on this car. It's just fix a few things that strain people away. So, all right. That's it for this one. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, clicking the bell, sharing the videos. You know, same thing I say in every video. But I hope you enjoyed this. Um, shaping, doing stuff like this is what I really love to do. So hopefully I can do some more of that.
Catch you on the next one.